Why do Germans have massive blow torches in their homes? And do German homes have bug infestation problems? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. If you've been following our channel for a while, then you know that we moved from our first apartment in Germany into a house last fall. We made videos about the differences between that German apartment and American apartments that we've lived in, but after moving from a apartment to a house in Germany, we've experienced a few more differences between German and American homes that we had never experienced before. Some of these are honestly things that Americans need to adopt and some things that Germans may need to adopt. And there are some things that honestly we have no idea what they are and we need you to explain them to us. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in our video. Don't get salty, but are German homes faulty? Okay, let's talk about something that is German, but is so much more American in spirit, and that is blowtorching the crap out of weeds on your property. This handy tool is something that we had never seen before moving to Germany, and to be honest, the one that I have is the baby version. Typically, we see Germans standing in their driveway with a massive tank of gas attached to a long hose that they carry around and shoot a massive flame at weeds to burn them alive. The reason for using this is pretty German though, and that is to reduce the amount of chemicals that are being sprayed that could not harm the environment, but also your health. In fact, Roundup, the most popular weed killer in the US is banned in most European countries because of the chemicals it contains. So in place of chemical carcinogens, Germans use blow torches. To be honest, I don't think that Americans are so attached to their sprays that they wouldn't trade them in for a blow torch. And in fact, I think that if this was an option in the US, most Americans would be so enthusiastic about the idea of walking around their yard with a blow torch, getting to burn things, they would probably choose that over the boring old weak sauce sprays. But let me know in the comments, which do you think you prefer? Sometimes Germans will accuse the US of its cuisine being a little too unhealthy because it contains either too much butter, fats, or salt. But I think I found part of the problem, and that is because rather than salting their food, Germans use all their salt on their dishwasher. Okay. Not really, but after living in Germany for about a year, we were hanging out with another American couple living over here, and they started telling us about how their home's dishwasher wasn't working as well as it used to. And so they talked to their landlord about it, and he came over only to discover the problem was that they hadn't put any new salt in their dishwasher. All four of us were totally confused because we had never heard of putting salt in a dishwasher before. Now, I was scratching my head thinking maybe this is like some kind of trending TikTok life hack that makes your dishwasher more efficient, but then our friend explained that they learned there literally is a specific salt known as dishwasher salt that many German dishwashers use that you have to replace every so often. So if you're like us and have no idea what this is, the Wikipedia article on dishwasher salt says this. In some countries, especially those in Europe, dishwashers include a built-in water softener that removes calcium and magnesium ions from the water. Dishwasher salt, which is coarse grain sodium chloride, table salt, is used to regenerate the resin in the built-in ion exchange system. If a dishwasher has a built-in water softener, there will be a special compartment inside the dishwasher where the salt is to be added when needed. Now, I do want our American viewers to let us know in the comments if they had ever seen this in the US before, because a huge asterisk on this topic is that apparently this is known about in some parts of the US. In fact, I did find a Southern Living article that also explained that dishwasher salts could be useful for some Americans that have purchased a high-end dishwasher recently, as it helps soften the water and potential benefits are cleaner dishes longer lasting dishwasher and spot free glassware. They did seem to confirm the newness of this thing to Americans by quoting an expert in the field as saying, putting salt in your dishwasher might seem strange at first, but dishwasher salt is actually an excellent tool for keeping your unit operating at maximum efficiency. I will say that our water does seem significantly harder here in Germany than what we were used to in our homes in Oklahoma. So maybe there has been a greater need for it for a long time in Germany maybe. Oh, but definitely don't put regular food grade salt in this compartment if you have one. Bad things will happen if you don't use dishwasher salt. 
<laughs> okay, we get it. German windows are amazing. They're thick. They open wide open. They tilt. But even with all their magical properties, what do they not do? Keep bugs out. Shh. Do you hear that? That is the sound of a German home in the spring and summer. But that is the sound of a home in the US. In the US, and again, speaking specifically where I am from in Oklahoma, screens on windows are typically standard, and that is even the case even though we don't open our windows in Oklahoma very often because of a beautiful thing called air conditioning. However, in the off chance that you do open your window, the screens keep bugs from getting in your home. But in Germany, where they loof their homes and rooms a thousand times a day, screens are not standard. This means that one thing that you live with in a German home that you don't normally live with in an American home are bugs buzzing around inside all spring and summer. Now look, I love the fresh air and I love having our windows open, but I will never understand why screens are not standard in a German home where they open their windows constantly, but they are standard in the US where you almost never open your windows. This seems just so backwards to me. Of course, notice I am saying they are not standard in Germany and not they don't exist in Germany. You can go out and buy screens to put on your windows and doors, but based on the three years of living here, I can say that people that do this by far are in the minority and the rest of Germany seems to be okay with living with buzzing creatures for a few months out of the year after year after year. Now, just like it is super annoying to have bugs and other unwanted things slipping into your home when you don't have screens, you also don't want annoying and unwanted people gaining access to your computer and snooping on what you are doing online. That is why it is so important to have screens on your windows and the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN on your devices. Say you travel a lot like us. This means you are often connecting to Wi-Fi networks that you can't trust. There could be people lurking on the same insecure Wi-Fi network as you that could want to do you harm. Surfshark's VPN helps encrypt your online data while using that shared Wi-Fi network to keep you safe. Kind of like a virtual window screen stopping creepy creeps trying to get into your online data. Every time I'm in a hotel and on their Wi-Fi network, I always use a VPN. Now, that's all important, but where Surfshark gets really fun is when you want to watch another country's Netflix to catch a show that you don't have in your country's Netflix. <laughs> Germany's Netflix has The Office. <laughs> a VPN connects you to a server in the country that you need access to, which will allow you to stream that country's entertainment. Surfshark makes it super easy to do so as well because they use over 3,200 servers in 95 countries. And you can use Surfshark on unlimited devices with just one subscription. Use the link in our description and our code PASSPORT2 to get 83% off and three extra months free when you sign up today. So maybe they don't have screens over their windows, but what German and American homes do often agree on is having curtains over the windows. However, a big difference we have noticed is how curtains are hung in Germany versus in the US. In the US, you typically will have a bar of some sort that you will have installed over the window and you will hang your curtains on those. These also exist in Germany and can be found in some homes, but the most abundant form of hanging curtains that we have seen throughout our time in Germany are curtain tracks. Now, I did a quick search on a huge home improvement store in the US, and I did find that they do carry curtain tracks, so they must exist in some American homes. But again, this is not the standard, whereas in Germany, every home that we have been in has these tracks installed that you slide hooks onto, and that is how you hang your curtains. Basically, these tracks are screwed into the ceiling, and you may have a single track or multiple tracks for multiple layers of curtains hung at once. On the curtains, you will find loops that you will attach tiny plastic pieces to that usually will have tiny plastic wheels. Now, this has become one of my least favorite things to do when moving, but luckily you typically only have to do it once, but you feed the tiny wheeled plastic hangers through a slot on one end of the track and let it slide down until the curtain is fully hanged. Now, do I have a preference on if I prefer a rod or tracks? I guess not really, both seem to get the job done to me, but what about you guys? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> Now, this next part of the video is gonna be a little bit of a scavenger hunt because there are many things on the walls of our home here in Germany that honestly, I have no idea what they are. And actually when I asked our landlord, who of course is also German, he also told me he has no idea. So we're gonna go on a little hunt and see if any of you can provide an explanation. And actually the first thing is right behind me. All right, so this first thing that is always behind me in the back of a video is this little box on this wall here. It has a tiny little screw right in the middle of it and on it is a tiny stamped word, B-L-A-S-S. 
Gloss, which I don't know if that's like a company name or if maybe that actually is telling me what this thing is. And I'm scared to like pull it off and see what's behind it. I guess I could just unscrew it, but I don't know what this little box is. I don't know if there is some kind of like connection, electrical connection here that you can hook up something here that I just am not aware of what it is, but it's kind of random too. It's kind of high up on the wall and I can't imagine what this would be used for. So if anybody knows what this little random box is, let me know. For this next random thing, it's these little like protruding circles all over the walls in our home. Now there's a couple of different ones that we have. We have this one that's right here behind me that is actually, it feels almost like there was an old hole here because it sounds kind of hollow underneath it. But then there are other circles kind of generally up higher closer to the ceiling that look almost like it's a lid that's covering up something. But my guess with this one is that a lot of German homes were divided not into just a single family home, but into two different apartments. So like for our house, the upstairs used to be one apartment and the downstairs would be a second family in that one. So the room that I'm currently in, our understanding is that this probably was the kitchen of that old unit. And so my guess is with this circle is that maybe this was like for the vent hood over a stove that this is where the exhaust went out. And then now they've just kind of covered it up because it's not necessary anymore. And the other circles, like I talked about, are generally up higher on the walls in our house. We do have some that are a little bit lower. And my idea with these is that maybe these are access to electrical wires since the homes are built different, a little more solid with like cinder block or concrete that maybe when they construct these, they have to put these little caps over where electrical wires go and that's how you get access to them. So let me know, is that what that is? You can see right here, this is where we have one, two, and then we have a third one over here. So we have a high concentration of circles on our walls here. And a creepy crawly. Now this little random switch on the wall, I have no idea what this thing does. Whenever I flip the switch, nothing happens inside the house. So I think this is kind of like a relic of some old, maybe technology of some sort. But I don't think that was an old light switch. Cause I think the light switch is right here and these are also original maybe. So this one, I have no idea what this used to or possibly still controls that I just can't see anything happening. Now we're directly below where that other switch was upstairs. And there's kind of like another old school switch here that also Whenever I flip it, nothing happens. So I don't think this actually controls anything anywhere. This is some kind of just relic of old times, but I have no idea what this switch does either. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is low fat milk or full fat milk? Which do you drink? Thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and we will see you in our next video. That many German dishwashers, that many, that many German dishwashers use that you have Sorry, future Donnie, editing this. So many mess ups. My screens are not standard in a German home where they are open their... Again, I'm so sorry, future editing Donnie.